it is December and it's been amazing. Um, my first festive season in California with my son and it's just been incredible. God has been speaking to me about a whole lot of things. Um, but this video is about fasting and prayer and specifically about the January first fruit fast. And so some people may know about this, some people may not, why we do it, how we do it, when we do it. And also just a little bit about my testimony about fasting and my history with the January first fruit fast. So let's get into it. Um, I'm so excited that you are here today. Um, I want to first of all thank everybody um, who has watched my first video that was up on my channel. I'm just so overwhelmed by the engagement and all the views um, and I hope that it is useful and helpful um, to a lot of people. I see a lot of people who are commenting, who are relating um, to what I'm talking about. So as the year um, is going to start, um, um, or as the year is starting, we always have goals. Um, there's physical goals, like maybe health, um, family goals, career goals, and also spiritual goals. Um, and often sometimes, you know, in order to really transform your life spiritually, I always say adopt one small habit, you know, um, that you'll be consistent with throughout the year. You know, um, spiritual transformation doesn't just drop on you. And it's not like a miraculous one moment thing, but it's gradual as you are growing in the knowledge of Christ. And so for one person, it could be, hey, you know what? This year I was working and now I want to go and do a mission in Kenya, you know, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the villages there. And that's astounding and amazing, but not all of us can do that. For somebody else, a real spiritual transformation could be adding that extra hour into your prayer life and you know on a daily basis or um some somebody for somebody else it could be you know i've been a church goer but now i really want to immerse myself in service in my church and that's my next step and i really encourage that if you've been planted in a church for a while and just feel like you want to do more and be more involved I really encourage serving in the church. It really helps one to grow. And um, I'm going to refer a lot to Matthew 6, verse 33, which is one of my absolute favorite scriptures. Um, and it's about the kingdom and also about the things that are in our hearts. And that scripture says that seek first the kingdom of God and seek his righteousness. Those are two different things now. And I could get into righteousness and also get into that. But I'm going to focus more on seeking the kingdom. And then the Bible says, and all the other less important things. Oh, yes. In the TPT version, uh, it says, all these other less important things shall be added unto you. And so there's a certain maturity that comes in our spiritual lives when our walk with Christ starts to become less and less about us and about the things that matter to God, and that is his kingdom. That transformed my life um, when I didn't know if I was coming or going. At some point in my life, I was excluded from UCT, and I was trying to figure myself out. And my dad said to me, Bishop Mtembu, he said to me that um, focus on service, focus on the kingdom. What is God saying about the kingdom to you right now? And now I thought that was so strange, like, no, I need a job, or I need to go back to school. I need something right now. Um, and you're telling me that I need to be more involved in church or more involved in service and in the kingdom. Like, what are you talking about? But that was a completely, oh, it was a, a, a transformative time of my life and also a defining moment in that I learned that the more I um, focus on what, on God's things, God focuses on my things. And that's what the Bible says. It says, seek first the kingdom. So firstly, prioritize my kingdom and all these other less important things that seem like they are a priority to you, I will add unto you. Um, and so that's what I saw God doing in my life. I started focusing on service. And this is also linked to my calling. My calling is people. 
it's the people of God. Um, and that's what my calling is. It's for people. Everything that I, I do is for people and to make people's lives better. But I found my calling whilst I was serving in the church. I'm, I've been in the worship team all my life. Um, but then also was, you know, leading in the youth and was doing also outreach, also got involved in evangelism um, and all this other stuff. And then also pastoral care. Um, and just found myself whilst I was doing all those things and also found things that I don't want to do. And that's the great thing about once you get involved is if you're asking like, what is my calling? What am I going to you know? What does God want me to do? Get involved, um, get your hands onto it. All right. And then you'll start seeing where your heart is. So back to our topic, prayer and fasting, building that habit of prayer can transform your life completely. Um, and often we, we are, are good on our prayer meter and sometimes we are a little bit low and that's okay. Um, but we want to build that, um, habit so that you can start feeling when there's a lack thereof of something. Now I always speak about three pillars that are so important in the, in our life of faith as Christians. One is prayer. Prayer is the foundation of our own lives, but also in our churches, Nothing can operate without prayer. Even if there's three intercessors, <laughs> you, that's all you need. Two intercessors, that's all you need, who will stand in the gap and say, Lord, I pray for my church. I stand in the gap for my church. I stand in the gap for the worship team. Because the, the worship team, doesn't matter what songs they are singing, doesn't matter how nice their voices are, even if they are recording artists in your church, if they're not founded on intercession, there's no point. That's what my pastor used to say. There's no point. You know, the worship needs to be founded on intercession and prayer and time in the presence of God. So we need intercessors in this time and we need so many people. And I want to encourage you, if God is calling you to prayer, um, and this is one of my life's passion is intercession, respond to that calling. You are, And this is the thing, you're worthy. You're worthy. And this is how we feel. We feel like, I couldn't possibly be the one interceding for my church. If it bothers you and it's not bothering anybody else, then God is calling you to it. And so I would really encourage you, you know, um, I remember um, back home, we would wake up every morning, 5.30 in the morning, we'd be in church praying. And I'm getting an emo emotional thinking about this because I miss this so much. Before we start our day, we'd be on, your, on our tummies rolling around on the floor in our church just interceding and praying and standing in the gap for our church, for our families, for our community. And it was completely life-changing. And so once you've been in that kind of um, level of intercession, it's so hard to, 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 to step back from that level and not feel like you want to be there again. Um, I, I, you know, so yeah, there's lots to speak about when it comes to prayer, but if God is calling you to that this is your moment this is your time and 2023 is your year i wrote to instagram more prayer you know more of the word of god and that is the second pillar um, of our life in the christian faith is we need to immerse ourselves in the word of god now this is a trick or rather a, you know a great way of getting into the word of god if you're not used to picking up an actual big old Bible and opening it and seeing where God leads you. Some of us are not like that. Some of us, we need a little bit more guidance. And so this is what has helped me to be able to read my Bible more. It is the Bible app, the U version, the brown one. Um, it is an amazing app and an amazing resource for us to be able to get into the word of God. And what I really love on there are the Bible plans. Now, the Bible plans are planned according to either... You want to get into the book of Joshua. There's a million plans that dive into the book of Joshua and also have devotions and studies into the book of Joshua. Or you might be looking for a specific topic. Maybe you're looking for um, dealing with depression. You'll find a million things and a million resources on that app that can help you to be able to get into the word of God. And so I would encourage you to do that. All right. The third pillar um, that I speak about that is so paramount, it is worship. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Lord, I can't live without worship. Gotta do it, gotta have it. It is a foundation, you know, of our walk. And I luckily I've grown up in a church where worship 
has been um, on the foundation of prayer and the word of God, worship. And these things tie into each other. We can't worship without the word. We can't have the word without prayer. I mean, prayer to worship. And, um, but worship, you know, there were times in, 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 in my church, so many times where we, all we needed was to worship. And the person who was planned to be doing the sermon is like, I'm on the floor, I'll chair at the back. <laughs> I remember a time when we were worshiping and we were doing a revival. And I had, we had, one of our keyboard players had absconded. Doesn't that happen all the time? What's up with chemo players? You all like disappear sometimes. And for us struggling like churches, sometimes we, you know, we don't have nobody else. Anyways, so we're going through another season of chemo de abscondi. <laughs> and um, I was looking for a keyboard player and I reached out to a couple of people on, you know, on my phone. And then they told me to go look for some guy who was going to play the keyboard for us because we were having a revival that week. And I went to go pick up this guy, Elokshini. And I drove, I finally found him and then brought him back. And we were in the middle of our revival. The worship was so on fire. We were so much in the presence of God. Did that man play? Was he not underneath the keyboard? <laughs> Weeping the whole service. My point is that there's so much deliverance that happens during our time of worship. There's so much revelation that happens during our time of worship. Um, there's so much, um, there's just a lot of things that are locked inside our time of worship. And the Bible says that he is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and who will worship him in truth. Um, and so worship is so very important. And when you've done it in the spirit, you can't do it any other way. And I just feel like also we are in the season where there's a filtering happening, even in our worshipers who are in the limelight those who are recording artists, because he's seeking for those who are doing it in truth. And so there's a filtering that's happening there. And that's what I'm just feeling right now in my heart as I'm speaking to you, that he is seeking, even in those who are put up there and who are in the spotlight and who are recording artists, he's seeking those who are, who are doing it in spirit and who are doing it in truth. And so may God elevate you. I'm speaking to the worshipers right now as well, who are out there. Um, um, may God elevate you as you seek to worship him in spirit and in truth. And may you be booked and busy in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, and so those are the three pillars. Um, and so I'm focusing today on prayer and fasting specifically. Now, a real point is about fasting. Now, fasting is, <laughs> it's, a, it's a marathon, not a race. Now, I've done it so many times, so wrong. And um, I'm going to share a little bit about that and have a couple of laughs, but learn um, as we grow together. So we do a corporate fast called the January fast or the first fruit fast, whatever you call it, to start off the year. And this is a corporate fast that all of us as the children of God get into um, in the beginning of the year. And um, it is based on a couple of scriptures that I'd like to share with you now so why january why first fruit proverbs 3 verse 9 says honor the lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops that is the niv version and then the new living translation says honor the lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything that you produce so the idea in scripture is that the first of the crop the first of the harvest is the best and we honor the Lord with that. Um, in Exodus 34, verse 26, it says, Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Ezekiel 44, verse 30 says, The first of the ripe fruits, all right, of what you're going to actually eat, and all the gifts brought to the Lord will go to the priests. The first batch of dough must also be given to the priests so that the Lord will bless your homes. Another version says so that the blessing will rest upon your house. The whole idea is that January is the first month of the year and it is the best part of our year. And as the Bible is saying here is that we honor the Lord with the first. And so we are giving January as a first month to God so that the 
another version says that bring the first fruit of your harvest or of your crop so that the rest of your crop all right will be blessed and so we give january to god so that the rest of the year will be blessed now this transcends just fasting and, and things like that um in in my church back home we even give first fruit of our salaries so let's say god um gives you a promotion for instance um then the first salary of so that the rest of the salaries will be blessed we then honor the lord with that and it's a spiritual thing and so you you do it because of the revelation of the word um in your life now fasting in itself right is i always say an actual intentional and literal illustration of our submission to god when we say lord i humble myself before you i submit my life but when you're fasting you're literally doing that physically you are submitting the flesh all right so that you invoke the spiritual and i said in the beginning of this video it's not a race it's a marathon now i remember when we were at scf and you kids and then and man some of those niggles were doing the most they're archer passing out in lectures because man they were fasting and everything but like they were trying to show us man listen see now we are doing it it's like we are hungry right now look at us we're so thin and rickety and whatever else they're doing the most people were collapsing and whatever and, and you know it, it's up to you but my whole thing is i'm flexible with these things the idea is that we must be praying so if you're too weak to pray and you're asleep the whole time because you are low in energy then there's no point really and so i'd ask my parents my parents say listen grab a cup of juice or get a teaspoon of honey or have a meal if you're like so exhausted or so like low in energy that you can't actually do anything and you specifically cannot pray you know what i mean so i know lots of people will have opinions about this that it's all about like endurance and i don't see it that way we are submitting the flesh so that we can invoke the spirit we are freeing up our time um the time it takes to prepare think about buy um food um is the time that we now submitting to god and saying lord what are you saying um and here's what i'm putting to you right now and so fasting and my mom always says if you're fasting and you're not praying you're not fasting you're on a hunger strike all right <laughs> some people you know feel like yeah no, i did it for 40 days whatever but the idea is you know if you are eating for 40 days and you prayed for 40 days that's better than not eating for 40 days and actually didn't really eat didn't really pray or immerse yourself in the presence of the lord or read the word and so that is the point is that the whole idea is that food the preparation thereof thinking about it buying it everything that's going to do with food takes up so much of our day and so once we subtract that from our day we are able to free our day to spend more time in the presence of god and immerse ourselves in his word and that is the point isn't it is for us to give this january month to the lord and say lord what are you saying about 2023 and in this video i'm going to share what god had said to me about the year 2022 and how i was so excited <laughs> about the cemetery year and what god said was true but it didn't come without a price and also what god said about COVID during my prayer and fasting and how it actually came true that is the point is to reduce the, the distractions okay and also it transcends food it could be things that take up most of your day so for instance social media i get off social media altogether because social media is, is a big part of my life and so i get off of social media especially because i use my social media platforms um to engage in the word of god and i cannot do that if i do not prepare myself spiritually and so i relinquish social media for a couple of months even after the the fasting period just to hear what god is saying and what and what god wants me to do with my platforms moving forward um, and i really hear from him i want to hear from him what is his yes what is his no and so that could be a thing for you it could be television 
all right and so we do sometimes spend time on television just to you know relax and everything maybe it's taking that away and saying lord this is you know um what i'm submitting to you and saying the time that i usually spend maybe watching television or on netflix is the time that i want to immerse myself in the word of god and really grow my relationship and my knowledge in christ this is another very important thing about fasting and prayer is that fasting doesn't change god the bible says to us that god is the same today now and forever and our fasting doesn't change or manipulate god into doing something fasting and prayer changes you it changes you and that's what it is about it makes because god is speaking all the time and my dad makes an example of you know the old school radios where they had the antenna and you had to tune it and tune it just because you can't hear what's happening with broadcast doesn't mean the person who's in studio broadcasting isn't speaking but it's you it's for you to tune your radio in order for that voice to come out and that's what we're doing when we are in prayer and fasting we are tuning ourselves because god is speaking but are we hearing him are we distracted what are we doing are we busy with all the things that will be added unto us instead of seeking him first don't seek things seek seek god if you want things Ooh. And I'm telling you right now, if you're seeking peace, you're seeking love, if you're seeking clarity in your relationships, if you're seeking opportunities, if you're seeking to know Christ more, if you're seeking prosperity, if you're seeking health, if you're seeking deliverance, if you're seeking, ooh, seek God. Put Him first and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, often some people would say, Tando, sometimes I go into prayer not knowing what to say. I'm like, hmm. You sound like somebody in the Bible. <laughs> the word of God says that sometimes we don't know what we want to say in prayer. Ooh. And I, I always get emotional when I speak about this. And y'all have seen me on the lives. We don't always have to have the words. But once we close that door and we say, Lord, I'm in your presence right now. The word of God says that he intercedes for us, the Holy Spirit. Through, through, through groanings. You don't have to have words. You could be in the presence of God just listening or just being or just worshiping. And it, it says that he guides us to show us what to pray for. Incredible. And often we've thought about prayer as this di one directional thing where it's me putting to God my request and telling God what I want. But the Bible says he tells us or guides us in terms of what we should pray for. And this time of prayer and fasting in January is so important because God puts into our hearts what we should be interceding for as the year progresses. He puts into our hearts the prophecies and what we should be looking out for as the year progresses and, and guides us in terms of what we are to pray for. And so don't worry about that I don't have a list of things. In fact, you shouldn't have a list of things. God will give you the list. And also, even if you do have a list of things going into prayer, God will start to help you align that list because some of those things might not be aligned to his will, but you'll find that out in his presence. And so this is so very important that people feel like I'm not strong in my prayer life. Should I be fasting? Absolutely. So that you can grow in your prayer life so that you can focus and zone in on your prayer life. So some other logistical things that I find very important and likely in my church, we do speak about this. But it's things like hydrate. Like if you're not doing a dry fast, some people do do a dry fast. We don't, they don't even have any liquids. But I engage in a liquid fast because I've got to go to work and like do things and whatever. Like if I had time, I would do like a full on fast, you know. But sometimes, you know, we can't do that, especially for 21 days. So in my church, we are very dynamic about it. So we will do a fast Maybe for one week, we'll fast the whole day and then break our fast at 6 p.m. And what we do say is we are engaging in a Daniel fast the whole month. So we don't eat meat the whole month. So even whether you're fasting or not, you do not eat meat. And even when you're breaking your fast, you don't eat meat. That's if you are engaging in Daniel fast. So in our church, we keep it intricate and inclusive. And, you know, that's what I want, you know, Christianity to be, to be inclusive and not exclusive. 
Because like when the gospel found you, it was inclusive because it included you and you were a hot mess. But now that you're in the gospel, all of a sudden it's so exclusive and you can't be within. Allow us to, okay? So um, we did it inclusively. So maybe the first week, because it was a three-week fast, seven, seven, seven days, 21 days, and we start around the 10th, 9th of January. We do, first week we say, okay, cool, we're going to fast and break at 6 p.m. So you fast the whole day and then 6 p.m. you break um with a light meal and that meal will be vegetarian or vegan the second week some people are fasting let's say we say ladies you guys are going to fast monday tuesday wednesday and then uh, the gentlemen come in on wednesday thursday friday and they're just fasting for those three days throughout and they're not breaking their fast they break it only after three days and then the last week we all engage um in another fast again for another week and we say we are engaging the whole week for five days and we break our fast on the Friday or the Sunday. It depends on you. Do something that will help you. Do something. I want to repeat this properly. Do something that will help you to pray, right? To free up your day to pray. Not to completely exhaust yourself to the point where you're not engaging in prayer, all right? So hydrate. Drink lots and lots and lots of water. This is an amazing moment and time to be getting in your liquids and drinking lots and lots and lots of water and getting your body used to that um, uh, water intake, right? If you're on medication, daily medication, chronic medication, make sure. And if you are once, like let's say your medication needs food, like um, there's different types of medication that you need to have food to take medi that medication, eat eat to take your meds you know and maybe cut out meat or cut out whatever else you, um, you want to cut out and say that's my fast for this month but i need to eat because i'm diabetic or whatever um there's nothing wrong with it if you feel in your spirit and some people do they like i know i'm on chronic meds but i'm putting to god that um i want to fast and um so that i can be delivered from diabetes or delivered from chronic meds and God does something for them and they feel in their spirit that it's time and that's what God is saying, go for it, you know. But I don't want people to feel pressure like, oh no, I'm not doing it properly, etc. You are, you're engaging in prayer corporately and that's the point, all right. So hydrate, take your medication, but do what is most helpful to you. Okay, now I want to share um, just a couple of my testimonies from, you know, fasting in January. and. God spoke to me so strongly quite a few years ago about January in general. And, you know, you could find me anywhere on New Year's Eve, child, anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. Um, but God spoke to me so strongly one year and he was like, I really want you to be in my presence when the year starts. And I haven't changed ever since. So every time it's New Year's Eve, you'll find me at church. If not, I'll be at home praying and just celebrating into the new year. So those are the things that God speaks to me about that are so personal. And I've also put things that are personal to God. Um, two years ago in my January fast, I prayed about my skin. I really was struggling with my skin and didn't want to be a person who was always wearing makeup and covering up. I, remember I wanted healthy skin. And I prayed about it during my January fast. And some people might be like, are you kidding, girl? I'm like, yeah, whatever matters to you matters to God. And my skin matters to me at that time. And so God pulled through for me, a friend of mine that year, after I got into prayer and fasting and mentioned to God that, hey, God, this is where I'm at. Um, that year, a friend of mine who was starting her medical aesthetic business of mine reached out to me and said, hey, listen, um, I'd like you to come for a consultation for your skin and you, in return, you can post my stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Chow, can you just see? I don't wear like um, foundation anymore, you know? And God pulled through for me for that. And other things, I mean, you can be paying, praying for people and missionaries and also be praying for your hairline. Like God, it matters to God if it matters to you. In the beginning of January, that was going to be the lockdown. God spoke to me about um, solitude. I remember that during that time of prayer, I was praying and God was speaking a lot to me about solitude. I even wrote it on Facebook. I have proof of it. Where I said, I feel in my spirit that God is calling us to solitude. He's going to keep some people alone so that he can deal with them and that he, they, they are, they'll be forced to address things in their lives and in their hearts. And God will bring them to a place where they will be forced to be alone. And lo and behold, the next month went into lo global lockdown. 
Another thing that God spoke to me about was in the beginning of 2022, the beginning of this year, and that was the Shemitah year. Yeah. And you all know, for people who follow me on Instagram, I was so excited about this, and I still am. I was actually just weeping now as I was preparing to do this content because I was like, Lord, you have stayed true to your word. Every single thing you spoke about the Shemitah year has come true for me. Let me explain to you why. God spoke to me um, and to our church about the Shemitah year and that the Shemitah year, and if you want to know more about the Shemitah year, please log on to my Instagram. It's there. That video is on my timeline. The Shemitah year, and God said it was the year of restoration, <laughs> the year of rest, <laughs> and the year of release. And I was out here doing an Instagram video going, I'm so excited, y'all, about restoration. You know that if you are going to be going into restoration, that means something needs to break or something needs to lag, something needs to finish, something needs to be in disarray for it to be restored. Little did I know that I was going to have, what? <laughs> the year of my life. You need to know what lack is. You need to know what brokenness is. You need to know what disarray is and confusion is for you to really know the full effect of God's restorative power. And that's what I went through this year, where I went through so much brokenness, so much confusion, and just asking, why me? Why me, Lord? And, and God just being like, you will learn me, and you will learn a different facet of me that will, that's going to blow your mind. And so what I'm trying to show you is, how this year, um, this, this idea of praying and fasting and just dedicating the year to God is so very important because God gives you clues about what's to come and he prepares you about what's to come. And that's so very important for us um, as we are walking this walk of faith. So I'm so excited about this January 2023 prayer and fasting, first fruit fast. I'm so excited. If you're going to be joining, please do comment and let's encourage each other. So be blessed as you're going to be heading into your fasting and prayer. I pray that God may speak to you in a way that you haven't experienced before. I pray that you may grow in the knowledge of Christ in a way that you haven't experienced before. I pray that you may um, have a revelation of what this year has in store for you, for your church, for your community, for your country. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed. Bye.